The Samsung Galaxy S series come in three flavors this year. The big Galaxy S20 Ultra that has the best zoom camera ever put on a phone and then the Galaxy S20 Plus, a direct successor to last year's S10 Plus model and the Galaxy S20 which only makes one compromise. The lack of millimeter wave 5G yet still manages to cram in all the power of the series in a super compact form factor. Hello Internet, Vic with Phone Arena here and I have been using and testing these three phones in the past few weeks and it's time for an in-depth review. The Galaxy S20 series feature an aluminum frame and glass on both the back and the front, but their best design feature might actually be something that Samsung removed, and that's the curved edges of the screen. The screen is now essentially flat, which makes for a better viewing experience and you can fit a regular glass screen protector too. Samsung has also taken care of the little details. Remember that off-center USB port on the S10 series? It wouldn't stop you from buying the phone, but it was puzzling to see it on a flagship and the S20 series now finally have their USB port properly centered. And you already know that the 3.5mm headphone jack is gone and there is no adapter in the box. Instead you get a pair of USB-C headphones. Also there is no longer a physical Bixby key. This one, we're glad it's gone. It made no sense on the S10 series last year, where one would often press it accidentally instead of the power key. The power and the volume buttons are on the right side and, and they feel clicky with a good amount of travel. But while many phones get those design basics right these days, not many quite have the incredible display quality that you get here. All three Galaxy S20 series come with the latest Super AMOLED technology with vibrant rich colors, great viewing angles and are just all around a joy. By default they are set to the vivid screen mode where colors really pop, but you can go into display settings and switch to the natural color mode to get them more toned down and neutral. The big new feature is without a doubt the 120Hz refresh rate. We have made a small blind test by showing it to a bunch of people and everyone was impressed by how smooth it made everything look, even if they couldn't point out the technical reason why. Interestingly, Samsung however has decided to have the phones running at 60Hz by default and you need to go into the screen settings to change to 120Hz. The reason for that is because the 120Hz really takes a toll on battery life, but more on that a bit later. And while we love the colors of the screens of the S20 series, there is one thing that Samsung has left behind and that is the fingerprint scanner. The fingerprint reader is built under the screen and it uses ultrasonic technology, but it hasn't changed at all from the S10 series and the Note 10. It does work, but it is much slower than optical fingerprint scanners used on most other phones and you often get missed readings. For something that is used often hundreds of times in a day, it can quickly get frustrating and this is our biggest gripe with the S20 series. As for the rest, we really don't need to spend much time talking about performance. You have the latest and most powerful chips here. The Snapdragon 865 if you live in the States and the slightly subpar Exynos 990 for most other countries. You also get either 12GB or 16GB of RAM on the Ultra, which is more than on many laptops. All of these phones are absolutely amazing for mobile gaming. Whether you play PUBG or Fortnite, the S20 will handle those games like a champ. And in terms of storage, you get 128GB of fast UFS 3.0 storage, plus you still have a microSD card slot, so you can use your own card to get even more storage on board. There is one pleasant surprise that we wanted to mention here, and that's the loudspeaker on the S20 series. It's a big improvement. Even when compared to the Note 10 Plus, here you get a much richer, louder sound. There is a button firing loudspeaker right here, and sound is also coming from the earpiece at the top, and it's really impressive overall for a phone speaker. And as for the interface, the S20 series features the latest version of Samsung's One UI, and it has not changed much at all compared to the Galaxy S10 or Note 10. Same visual style, same big icons, same everything. But why change what already works, right? You do have a new Samsung quick share function that allows super fast transfers of large files and is really cool, but it only works between Galaxy phones. Ok, let's talk cameras. Samsung itself admits that cameras are the main reason that is driving people to buy expensive phones like these ones and it aims to really break the mold with the S20 series. Cameras are also the one area where you will notice the most difference between each model in the series. The S20 in particular gives you the best zoom quality, 
while the S20 and the S20 Plus right here give you better zoom than other rivals, but not as good as on the Ultra. And the reason for that is that the Ultra has a real telephoto lens right here, a folded periscope lens with 4 times native magnification, and it makes images zoomed 4 times or further extremely clean and good looking. And then you have the S20 and the S20 Plus that don't even have a telephoto lens at all. They use a secondary lens coupled with a 64 megapixel sensor and use all those pixels for digital zoom. They still do a very good job, just not quite as good as the Ultra. And then you also have the main cameras. The S20 Ultra comes with a gigantic 108 megapixel main camera, while the S20 and the Plus feature a 12 megapixel main shooter. You would think that this 108 megapixel shooter would really be something different. In reality, however, it is set to shoot 12 megapixel photos that combine 9 individual pixels into one. You can also shoot 108 megapixel photos, but we honestly don't recommend that, as a single image can take more than 30 megabytes of space. So big, you won't even be able to share it in social media. The only reason why you would want to shoot 108 megapixel photos is if you're planning to print those photos on a large canvas, which probably won't happen very often, but in that case, please do. And when you compare the 12 megapixel shots from the Ultra and then to the other two, there is very little actual difference. Colors are similar, the amount of detail is similar, so we don't think you are missing out on much. In low light, the S20 series are all capable of capturing excellent photos. You have the tiny blue icon in the bottom right on the camera app for Samsung's Scene Optimizer, and now it will automatically turn on night mode when it sees fit. This means you don't have to explicitly go and manually select night mode every single time, which is great. If you however do that, you will notice that when using the manual night mode, the phone will take much longer to capture each picture, sometimes 7 or 8 seconds and that photo will have a bit more light than the one with automatic night mode. But it's almost never worth the trouble and the automatic mode would do just fine most of the time. You have been hearing about a number of bugs for the camera on all three phones and unfortunately there are some, but none of them are deal breakers. The most annoying one in our experience is with the front camera, it oftentimes inexplicably blurs out parts of the image, while other times the photo looks perfectly sharp, it's just unpredictable. And when you're recording video, you also sometimes lose the focus and then have it back. Samsung has already started fixing some of those with updates, and we hope it fixes all of them soon. As for video, the new feature here is 8K video recording. 8K on its own is not a gimmick, but we're also not sure if it's ready for prime time. Here is why. First of all, 8K files are extremely big. A minute and a half of recording can take up to 1 GB of space. Second, 8K doesn't even play back smoothly on the phone itself. And third, there are very few TVs and monitors that support the 8K video resolution. If however you happen to be in some truly amazing place and you're planning on creating a video for the world to watch and not just shooting a video at a birthday party or whatever, please do use the 8K option, it is worth it. But for all else, stick with 4K or even 1080p. Those formats use a lot less space and video stabilization will actually work on them, unlike with 8K. And you should also know that in 4K you can also zoom up to 20 times in video, really impressive if you're trying to capture something far far away. Let's also say a few words about 5G. All three S20 phones have 5G support in markets where there is a 5G network, but the smaller S20 is the only one that doesn't have support for millimeter wave. That's the type of 5G that is only available in individual small spots, but has those super fast speeds. We don't think that's something that you will miss, but still you should know about that. All three phones support the more widespread type of 5G called Sub-6 because it uses frequencies below the 6 GHz range. Finally, let's also address battery life. We have a 5000 mAh battery in the S20 Ultra, a 4500 mAh battery on the S20 Plus, and a 4000 mAh battery on the S20. That's a big change from the S10 series. And we have some good and some bad news. The good news is that if you use the phones at 60 Hz, they will last more than all previous Galaxy phones. The bad news is that the moment you switch to 120Hz, battery life takes a nosedive and goes from excellent to just average. 
your choice. We have tested all three phones a couple of times and we get the following battery results. As you can see, the S20 Ultra is the one least affected by the 120Hz option, but even on it, battery life goes down by some 20%. On the S20 Plus and the smaller S20, battery life drops by about a third when you switch to 120Hz. And on the charging front, all three phones come with a 25W fast charging adapter. Unlike the charger on the S10 that used Qualcomm's proprietary quick charge option, this new charger uses a USB-C connection on the brick and features the universal USB power delivery standard. And this is great because you can use the same fast charger for your Galaxy as well as get the benefit of the fast speeds if you charge up an iPhone or say a Google Pixel with this same charger. But most importantly, it's great because it's very fast. While it used to take around an hour and 40 minutes to fully charge up the Galaxy S10 series, the S20 phones charge fully in just one hour. You also get more than 50% charge in just half an hour, so a quick top-up at lunchtime is all you need. The S20 series also supports fast wireless charging at 15 watt speeds. You would need to buy the wireless charger separately, but if you have it, you will also see your phones fully charged in an hour and 40 minutes, which is impressively quick for a wireless charge. And so finally, prices. The small S20 costs $1,000. The S20 Plus is priced at $1,200 and the S20 Ultra costs $1,400. These are the best, but also the most expensive phones Samsung has ever made. And are they worth upgrading from the S10 series? Now that's a tough one. And the answer is only if you absolutely insist on having that zoom camera and want to use the 120Hz option despite its effect on battery life. For all it's worth, the S20 series once again proved how great of phones the Galaxy S10 already were. And now that they are available at lower prices, we wouldn't blame people who would consider them a better deal. And that guys rounds up our review of the S20 series, a trio of excellent phones launched at a very bad time for the world. Do you already have the S20 series? Let us know what you think about them in the comments. We as always wish you to be well, stay healthy and safe and enjoy the luxury of technology that helps us get through these tough times. My name is Vic, this is Phone Arena, and I'll see you in the next one.